Okay, thanks everybody for coming. Um, this workshop is uh, titled What's New in Ultra? And we're gonna go over some of the new developments um, that have occurred uh, from, April, from the April release through now. And then we'll also do a little preview of what's coming um, next month as well. Uh, I hosted this workshop, um, I think in April or March that covered the, a few months before that as well. And that uh, recording should be available on our YouTube page, and I'll, I will also send that out um, in our in the follow-up email. Uh, my name is Kevin Harris. I'm the Instructional Support Coordinator uh, here at CIDL. Um, I've included my email address here in case you need to reach out. Um, my role here at, at CIDL is to offer uh, support for instructors and staff uh, in the use of technology to aid uh, instruction. Um, so if you find yourself in need of, of any support, um, specifically with Blackboard or some of the other teaching tools, um, please feel free to reach out. You can email me directly at kevin.harris at niu.edu, or you can email us here at CITL, that's C-I-T-L at niu.edu. Um, so today we're gonna just look at um, a few resources regarding uh, the updates. If you don't know, Blackboard issues um, an update once a month. Typically, it's the first Thursday of every month. Um, and we essentially here create a little resource for that every month to help kind of keep people up to date with those uh, changes. But there's also um, a number of other resources, and I'm going to share those um, before we actually jump in. Then we're going to look at, uh, we're going to break the, the items up into a couple of categories, essentially assessments or assignments, grading in the gradebook, course design, um, AI, and then what's coming. And then at the end, we will uh, have some time for some questions, um, comments, or just any sort of troubleshooting or exploring that we may need to do. If you have questions, feel free to throw them in the chat. Uh, you can also just um, unmute and, and speak up as well. That's absolutely fine. Um, I'm going to, I already clicked these links and I will share these with you. So here are uh, some of the resources um, that I will share out in the email following this uh, presentation. So. Uh, the first one is just the release schedule. So um, the next uh, scheduled release is, is for the 5th of September, and then essentially the first Thursday of every month um, following that. Uh, you can also access the uh, release notes here as well. So they, uh, Blackboard archives the release notes, which you can then go back and find uh, any information on the uh, previous releases here. In addition, we, uh, we maintain a page on the website um, connected to uh, or all about the updates. Uh, you can come here as well. Uh, like I said, at the beginning of the month, uh, I try to do it on that Thursday that the release is updated. Um, we put out a little video. We try to keep them around five minutes on just the main four to five um, updates from uh, that month. And then you can access this playlist, uh, which is located on YouTube. And these are also on the CIDL Blackboard site. Another really useful tool um, is the, uh, ideal, uh, the idea exchange, uh, which you can uh, join, you can get, create an account, and here's where you can propose ideas um, or vote on ideas. You can make comments um, and suggestions and so on here as well. This is uh, managed by Anthology, the parent company of Blackboard, and most of the updates, uh, and I believe there have been like 400 of them over the past year, um, most of those ideas come from this idea exchange. So you could create an account on here, or you could just send us an email and one of us can go in and um, add, add your idea or vote on that idea. Um, the, like I said, so this one right here, the, the currently most popular um, item was to not create an attempt when students view an assignment. Uh, and that was implemented in this month's release. And uh, we'll, we'll spend some time looking at that as well. Um, all changing question points and tests. Uh, subscribe to discussion board threads. Again, that one's going to be implemented or was just implemented uh, in this week's um, update as well, or last week's update as well. Um, so this is where they get their ideas from. Or a lot of the ideas, um, they're quite responsive. So if you have ideas, you have suggestions, let us know, or just go in here to the idea exchange and add them. Uh, in addition to this workshop, we offer uh, a number of workshops every month. Uh, and there are quite a few of them coming up um, as we build back into the school year. Um, a few to uh, note, I think, are um, there's one on what's new in AI uh, on Monday. Uh, and then uh, Anthology uh, is hosting a workshop similar to this one 
um, on Tuesday as well that um, you're welcome to sign up to uh, and attend. Uh, and then a number of other ones on using Blackboard or getting back into um, the classroom, syllabus design, uh, using VoiceThread and, and so on. So feel free to browse our site. Um, like I said, these update every month. And with that, I think we will get into the content. So most of this is going to be a demonstration. So like I said, if you have questions or comments, please feel free to stop me or just come off mic and, or come on mic and we will um, uh, kind of dig deeper into, into that idea or that topic. So let me there we go. Okay, so I just structured this workshop in, in the form of a of a blackboard course, um, and I used uh, modules to kind of organize my content here. So. Um, the first area I think um, to look at will be assessments. And there are a number of new features that have been added over the past six months. Um, oftentimes they'll, they'll release kind of part of a feature. So for example, they release the ability to print items, um, tests and assignments. Um, and then the following month, they release the ability to print the answer keys that go along with those. So sometimes uh, they kind of build on the releases, uh, but for the sake of today, they should kind of all flow together. Um, the first thing that I, that just came out this month and that I think is going to impact um, a lot of instructors is they have redesigned the assignment tool. So prior to this release, an assignment and a test in Ultra were essentially the exact same tool. They had a different icon, but they did the same things. They looked the same and so on. And that became an issue um, if students opened uh, something in an assignment. So they clicked on the assignment oh, and there was like a, a, and a document with, with the assignment directions on it. And if a student clicked that, it essentially started an attempt. Uh, and when that happens, it really limits what an instructor can do in the background. Um, and so they've essentially created two separate tools now. What used to be the assignments, if you wanna access that, you can still do that using the test feature, um, but assignments will now look like this. So the only thing that you have access to now in an assignment is um, this text editor. You can no longer add questions in an assignment. If you want questions like multiple choice, true, false, essay questions, you have to create a test. You can then recategorize it as anything you want, um, but if the tool itself, you would use the test tool. Um, so for this, uh, you can really create anything that you want here. I'm just gonna, you can add videos, you can add PDFs, you can add Word docs, it doesn't matter. Uh, anything that you can do in the text editor anywhere else, you can do here. Um, and then when this is saved, now we're gonna go and see it from uh, student preview. So for a student now, when they open up an assignment, it's going to give them the option to view instructions instead of start attempt. So they can view instructions. This has not started an, an attempt. You can still edit this uh, on your end um, and so on. Once they put information in here, let's say they have a, a Word doc, they drag and drop it in here and then hit submit. Then that's when the attempt is created. It's not created uh, when they just open it to look at it. Um, this has been somewhat of an issue in the past where some instructors will have material kind of made and students will go, but not necessarily finalized. And students will go in and look at some of the instructions and then it locks out the instructor's ability to edit or, or update documents. Um, you'll now be able to do that as long as they don't actually submit something um, and therefore they haven't started an attempt. Um, like I said, you lose the ability to add uh, question types. Let's save here. Um, you, you lose the ability to add question types. If you wanna add questions, you would just use the test tool instead of the assignment tool. Um, we now have the ability to also print. Uh, this had been a uh, very highly requested, um, uh, I guess, addition or, or tool. Um, and when you open an assignment, you'll see that print feature right here in the upper right-hand corner. Um, and if you click it, you can choose to print questions only. And then here you can save them as PDF. You can send them to your printer. And give it a second to load. Um, 
Ah, there we go. The beauty of the live demo, uh, never knowing if it's going to work and create a little bit of stress there. Um, but anyway, so you can look like it looks like this, and then you can print it out. It, they've done some work on uh, limiting like where the questions cut off, uh, but it's still not perfect. You can see in this one, it, it puts some of the answers on another page. Um, but I know that's something that they're actually working on now. Um, and then if you want to print an answer key, you can do it the same way. You just select the option with the answer key. It will load like this. And then now you can see um, where the correct answers or what the correct answers are that were created in the assessment. Um, two new additions also that were um, very heavily or highly requested were the ability to submit um, anonymous discussion posts and anonymous forms. Uh, and especially with forms, the, people were very, um, um, had very strong opinions that a form should be able to be anonymous. So when you create forms, uh, you just click. I, I already created this one and I have some submissions uh, to kind of show what it looks like. But essentially, if you want to make it anonymous or allow students to submit um, anonymously, you will create the form and then you'll click into the settings here using that little wheel. And then you scroll down and there'll be a checkbox for anonymous submissions. Um, this is not on by default. You have to turn this on when you create the form. Once you create it and save, you get this cool little hat and glasses icon to let you know that it's um, that submissions will be anonymous. And then from the instructor's point of view, once they've been submitted, um, this is what it looks like. So you get, you receive no student information. You can only see like the time and the date. And then you can go in and look um, at the responses without knowing who submitted them. This could be more open-ended as well. Uh, I just chose these Likert questions for ease of use. Uh, the same, you can follow the same process for uh, discussion posts. So if you've created a discussion post and you wanna make it anonymous, again, you go into the settings wheel and then uh, you don't have to scroll as far down. There's like an allow anonymous responses and replies section here, uh, and you can check that box and save. And then, so some students here chose not to uh, make an anonymous post, but then someone replied with anonymous uh, anonymous posts. So um, if, if that's something that you're interested in, that option is available. Uh, another addition to the discussions is the ability to follow discussions. So you can now be notified when someone uh, either posts or replies. Um, and that's pretty simple. All you have to do is click the little bell up in the upper right-hand corner. You may want to then, especially the first time you do this, go into your notification settings and set when you actually receive those notifications. So do you want them immediately as they come in or once a day? Um, there, there you have different options that you can, you can select there. And I'll show you the student workflow on that as well. So if a student goes here and they start to type their response, they can then just click this box here to post um, anonymously. And then when they respond, you'll get that. You know, it'll say anonymous like this here below and no uh, avatar. The, let's see what else we have. Ah, default question uh, values, uh, point values for questions have been changed from 10 points to one point. So if you have an assessment and you create a question, um, just add a true false question, you can see here that the default is now one point and then you can go in and change those as, you know, as needed to whatever point value you choose for each question, uh, but the default will now be one. And this is this one's been out for a few months, so you've, it's likely that you've already seen this. You also have the ability to duplicate questions. Um, I find this to be quite useful if you have like a series of multiple choice uh, responses that are that are similar. Um, to do this, you have your questions already created. If you just click the three dots out here to the right next to the point value, and then you can click duplicate and then edit. And now if you want to, you know, change the answer or change a little bit in the in the text, then you save. And now you can create questions faster. Like I said, especially if they have, if you have like a, a common set of uh, like multiple choice responses, I think would be a good use for this.
uh, there's now the ability to batch edit dates and times, um, due dates and, due, uh, and times. Um, and you can also use the batch edit feature to just change uh, one individual due date and time. Uh, to access that, you go up here next to the magnifying glass and click the three dots and then click batch edit. And then if you want to edit, um, so you just select an item here and then you can edit dates, choose a start date uh, and an end date as well. You can also, um, if you roll a course over and, and you, um, and you know like a number of days from the start of the semester until this assignment's going to be due, you can kind of set uh, those parameters as well. Um, that's, to me, that's a little bit, <laughs> it's a little difficult because those two semesters are exactly the same. So um, you can set a specific date and time, show on, high adapter and so on. Um, and then you can do that also for multiple items. So you can set you know, everything in, in your class to be open on a certain date or to close on a certain date and so on. Uh, in the past, you needed to go into um, each individual assignment and do this. So hopefully that can save a little bit of time for some of you. And then uh, lastly, there's now the ability to set multiple release conditions and or multiple um, release uh, multiple rules for the release conditions. And so to do this, you would go um, up here and select release conditions in the upper right-hand corner. You can then set um, your rules. So you wanna have this, you can, this can be specific members, it could be groups, it could be um, all members. So this might be if you have um, a, a mixed section of, of undergraduate and graduate students, you may want graduate students to be able to access some information that undergraduates can't. This, this is a case where you might use this. Um, or they may need to have like, it may be just for graduate students and then they also had to score a certain percentage on a certain assignment in order to access this. So um, we'll just make an easy one, do a, a, a date and time for all members and we can save that. But then we can also set um, a different rule and then maybe that's a performance based uh, on uh, the duplicate question assignment that we just did. So um, you can kind of choose these and they can be kind of as intricate as you need them to be, uh, but the feature now exists. Um, and those are the main changes that have occurred related to assessments and assignments. Um, like I said, this assignment tool, it might take a little while to get used to. Um, it's probably the, the biggest change. Uh, does anybody have any opinions on any of these? Um, you think you'll, you'll use these in your course? Do you find any of them more useful than others? Or is there anything that you would still like to see that you haven't seen uh, here? Any features that you would like to be added? Yeah, I agree. I, th I think the anonymous forms can be can be quite useful. Yeah, batch, yeah, batch edit. Um, I think batch edit can be extremely useful as well, especially as a as a time saver. And then other updates. Good. Um, Kevin, all right, let's got a, a question. Yeah, go ahead. Yes. Um, I'm just wondering, in terms of printing the tests, do you know um, if they can be then easily exported into, you know, uh, another LMS or exported into for creating test banks? Uh, yeah, I don't know for sure. Um, what I what I would say is that um, if you print them, let's just do one of your questions only. If you print it as a PDF using our new license with Adobe, we can then edit that PDF to to make it, um, to, which can give you the ability to kind of alter the questions or or move things around a little. As far as like uh, adding them then to another LMS, I'm not sure of how that would work or, or okay. how kind of smooth that would go. Yeah, no worries. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Yep, you're welcome.
All right. Let's close this one. Uh, we'll move on to grading. Um, so the grade the grade book view has now changed. It's been changed for a few months, so this may look familiar to you. Um, but let me go to the gradebook and we can see it. So there, in the past, there were essentially uh, two choices. Um, and they were, I think they had icons, uh, which you could get, uh, you could have the two list views. These, I think that this item and this item were kind of under the same label. And then you had to select which one. Uh, and then there was this grid view. So uh, now you can choose one of three. And as of next month, there's gonna be a fourth one added. Uh, and we'll look at that in a, in a minute. But um, you essentially have the gradable items list. You have uh, the students list where you can go into each individual student. And then the grades is a more traditional grid style um, grade book from here. There are different features available. Uh, so some features exist in some of these views and not others. Um, so for example, you can create a calculation uh, in this uh, in this view here by um, you know, just finding the purple plus and clicking that. Um, I guess you can do that here as well. Um, yeah, so maybe there, maybe some of the features still exist, kind of, fit, kind of throughout. But really, this is kind of a preference. Um, you know, I taught for eleven years, and this was my preferred grade book because this is what was familiar to me. Um, but you may find it easier to use some of these, especially if you want to move items. I think this view is a great um, option for that. Um, there's going to be an overview tab added to this as well, which will tell you the items. It'll give you a list of items that need graded and a list of items that need posted. So you'll have four choices, these three plus one, that's going to tell you like, essentially like what work you still <laughs> you still have to do. It's a nice reminder, I guess, when you log in. Uh, let's see. Uh, oh, so uh, they've also changed the ability to, um, uh, they, they provided a little bit more flexibility in how, uh, calculations are determined when using weighted grades. So if you use total points, this doesn't impact you. But if you use weighted grades, you can now have the items um, in the gradebook uh, calculate either equally. So every item in that one category, so let's say it's tests, uh, are all worth the same uh, essentially percentage or, or point value within that category, or you can have it proportionally. So let's say you had 10 quizzes uh, and all of the, let's say half of those quizzes were worth you know, 20 points and half are worth 10. Um, if it's equally, they'll all have the same value no matter what the point value was of the questions that were asked. Um, or you can have it set proportionally. And so the ones that were worth more points will then be weighted within that category uh, at more points. And so you manage that by clicking on the grade book and then you go into the settings wheel. And then you scroll down to manage overall grade setting. Um, and then you have to be in weighted for this uh, option to be here. Uh, and then it's either proportionally. So this would be, you know, again, calculated based on the point value of each individual assignment will kind of determine its value within that category or equally. And if you select equally, it'll tell you. Um, so I have eight items. Each one is worth two and a half percent of the grade. And here are, there are five items. Each one is worth 10 percent of the overall grade, bringing it up to you know 50 percent of the overall grade in that category. So. Um, Kind of give you those choices. I'm trying to remember. I can't remember what it was before. Uh, I think it was all proportional before, but I'm not positive on that. Uh, but now you can go in and pick and choose uh, which which way you want the grade to calculate. Um, you can now leave per question feedback when grading by student or grading by question. This is another one that they released over the period of a couple months where you could do one, but not the other. Uh, now you can do both and you can in include audio or video uh, feedback as well. Um, unfortunately, the video feedback will be of your face and not of like a screenshot, uh, which would be a useful feature that hopefully they'll look at adding here soon. Um, so how this works, when you're in uh, in grading, you just select a student, uh, and then with their with this new flexible grading layout, you have the option to grade by student. So I can have this student's all of their answers, or you can grade by question. So all of the responses to question one, and then all of the responses to question two, and so on. Um, and then in either of these, you can now leave per uh, item or per question feedback here. So I can go in here, uh, click the little plus sign out next to this person's name. 
and then I can just put type in my feedback save and then I can go on and do that for the next student as well in the past you couldn't do it this way you had to then go in to the students overall grade and then leave uh, feedback there so this will I think improve that uh, workflow and again it's the same for uh, if you're doing it by student you can see that that with that little purple indicator there shows that there's feedback um, uh, on that question they've also added these buttons to kind of improve the workflow and make things a little a little quicker uh, where you can now switch. So if I'm in students here, I now have the ability to move forward or back from here without having to go over and click over on the left-hand side. And that's the same for questions. You can move through through questions using these um, arrows as well. So a few changes to hopefully uh, make that grading workflow a little quicker. Uh, and a little more efficient. Um, okay, auto submissions are also now reflected in uh, in a temp log. So this would uh, this case uh, this scenario would exist if you created a timed assignment. If the if the time runs out on the time assignment and you have the settings set to submit that assignment, that's now going to be indicated in the attempt log. Um, to access the attempt log for each student, you go into the assignment and then click submission. And then go out here to the three dots outside of their name, and you can click attempt log. Um, this is a tool that a lot of people don't know exists, and it's getting ready to become a bit more robust as well. Um, but you can now see that it was opened today at this time. It gives you uh, a time on and uh, also a duration on so when they started on this question and how long they spent on the question. I wouldn't put too much weight on this. Uh, I don't. I don't know. I don't have any information on how accurate this actually is. Um, but it'll give you an idea, uh, if nothing else. And then it'll tell you here when the item was submitted. And in this case, it was auto submitted. So again, this might be something, let's say you had a, a 40 question assignment uh, and you notice that students, a lot of students missed the last six questions where you can go in and look and see, maybe they just ran out of time. All of them had something auto submitted. And then you may know that, well, this may not be an issue of needing to reteach that content. It's just an issue that they ran out of time. Um, and so you can plan accordingly using that information. So those are the main updates that have occurred uh, related to grading in the past five months. Uh, any questions or comments regarding those? Make sure I didn't leave any out. Yeah, I agree. And, and I'll show you how to do that as well. Um, the, uh, the ability to leave the audio or video feedback. Uh, let's go back into this. So I'm going to just go into a student here. And then again, I could do it by student or by question. But if I want to click on that plus sign, uh, this text editor appears. It's now, like I said, the it's what the assignments are essentially is just this text editor. Um, but they're all the same throughout uh, all, of, all over Blackboard. It's essentially the same tool. Uh, and if you just click out here, uh, on the right hand side, you can click um, audio or video recording, and then you can set, uh, do you want to turn your camera on uh, and then record from here and leave that feedback that way. Like I said, they, when, once they, well, hopefully they will, um, if they add the ability to actually show the students work on the screen, I think it would be extremely helpful, um, but they're not there yet. So that's how you handle that. Yep, great, great, great. All right, course design. This is so outside of uh, the new assignment tool. I think the biggest change um, is here we go. Ah, uh, yes. Um, no. So if you want to now, are you are you asking for a single assignment, or do you want to remove automatic zeros? across your course for a single assignment. OK. Hmm. Well, let me see. I don't think I have been set for this. Uh, 
Um, let me come back to that. Uh, at the end, I'll, I'll change my settings to um, allow for automatic zeros, and then we'll troubleshoot that. Because I know if you go in and change the setting to turn it off, you can remove them, but that would be for every student, for every assignment, uh, and that doesn't sound like what you want. So um, I, we'll have to look at that a little, a little closer. Um, so the, uh, like I said, in addition to the assignment tool changing, um, the biggest improvement that I think they've made or that they've, that they've really been heavily investing in is uh, they've completely changed the way Ultra documents work. Uh, and so um, when you create a, <laughs> I'm gonna, uh, I think I actually created an assignment, not an Ultra document. So if you go to plus and then you go to create, uh, and then you go to documents here. Um, you'll now see it looks like this. So you have the ability to add content, HTML. You can upload a file, which would just leave a link to the file. Um, and you can do that through the cloud or through the file uploader uh, or the content collection. Or you can also uh, just import like a PDF, for example, or a Word doc, and it will convert it into this formatting. Um, so that, that convert a file, I think, is, is going to be a uh, pretty useful tool. Let's test it out. Uh, let's use this one. So this may be, maybe you have a PDF copy of a syllabus that you want to use. This may be a way to pull that in. And then it's probably going to require a little bit of cleanup, but um, it will get the information in for you, which is nice. Um, and now you have the ability to use columns and rows to create these documents uh, the layout in these documents to work a, a little bit better for you. Uh, you can customize it to kind of fit what you want. And what I mean by that is essentially once you create something, you can resize it uh, into um, these columns. So it could be one column wide, two, three, or four columns wide. Um, let's just say half here. And then if you want to add something new, you just go to the plus sign anywhere there's a hover plus, or you can just use the plus sign up here in the upper left. And then let's just say we'll add content. And then we want to add an image. And we'll use a stock image. And we'll say, well, it doesn't matter. So we'll just click this. Now I have this image. I can resize this. And now I can drag. I can drag and drop that and kind of move things around um, how, how I want them to be. So like, for example, I wouldn't leave this all, each of these were primary source documents. I would break these up into smaller sections. You can move them around. Um, you could add little video clips or other documents uploaded in there and so on. Um, but it, it provides a lot more flexibility and freedom uh, for you as the instructors when you're creating documents. So you can use uh, any combination of these features to add that content in. It does not do a text wrap um, yet. Uh, I haven't heard if they have plans to add that or not, but I do know it's a topic that's been discussed. So it won't like wrap text around the image, um, but it will give you significantly more flexibility than uh, what previously existed. This might also be useful because uh, with the AI, with their some of their AI software, you can use this then as content and it can generate uh, questions or assignments based off of the documents that you've added or created here. So um, that might be a tool that you want to use and explore. Uh, additionally, and I'm going to show you this at the end, um, starting in September, you're going to be able to add uh, more, I think it's more, I think they're formative. I don't think you can grade them yet. Uh, comprehension check questions. And, there, and right now it's just going to be multiple choice, uh, but you could add multiple choice questions inside of this document. So you could have students read a section, uh, watch a video or listen to a clip or, or look at a document and then answer a couple of comprehension checks, um, <coughs> excuse me, um, as they're working through this. So this is the major change. This is what they've really been focusing on uh, the last couple of months. Um, and it seems to be working quite well. And this is also nice because it um, connects with allies. So you can now take that content um, and um, students can then, you know, access this in, in a variety of different ways from um, audio or more screen reader uh, friendly versions and so on. Let's hit save there. And that's what it'll look like.
Um, another change is now in the past, if you if you wanted to uh, add an announcement to your course, you had to schedule that announcement. So if you wanted it to send like now or close to now, you would just have to schedule it for that. Uh, now they've added the ability to go into announcements up here in the top, create it. Um, I don't know, we'll just add some stuff here. And then you can either, you can still schedule that out if you want, but you click to do so. If not, it will post um, the, that announcement automatically. So now it's been posted. Um, so a new feature that was added. And I think lastly in this area, ah, there's a change in the base navigation filter. So you may have noticed this when you first logged on to Blackboard. Um, let me close out of this. So when you click on your courses, um, it, you're now going to have uh, this set of filters up here that you'll use. And it will remember your choices. So the next time you log in, it will come back to this group of settings uh, and filters that are in place here. So uh, if I close these out um, and it changes my course offerings or, or what's available and what's showing up here, um, when I come back, these same filters will be in place. So essentially you can search by the course title, you can search by terms, or you can filter by um, the different types of courses here. So that, again, what the, I think if you haven't seen this yet, it might look slightly different than what it used to, how it used to look. Um, but once you've used it once or twice, it, it becomes familiar. And I've, I can't really remember exactly what it looked like <laughs> prior to this at this point. So, All right, so that's it. Um, on the main changes in course design. And then lastly um, is now, uh, I'm sorry, lastly will be uh, AI and AI tools uh, that are going to exist or that do exist currently um, within um, Blackboard. Uh, two of those, um, one is the content picker. So now you can use um, different content items to generate uh, question types. Um, Blackboard has a pretty strong stance that they want uh, instructors to be in control of the AI, and therefore everything that AI generates, you have to select and then approve before it gets added to your course. Uh, and so, for example, you, you, you would be able to go up here to auto-generate uh, assignment. You can then select a course item. Um, I don't want to use that because there's nothing there. So I go into content and then I could you know, select this PDF, for example, select the item. You can also just type information in here in the description. You can choose the types of questions. It uses um, some of these terms from Bloom's Taxonomy uh, or you can leave it inspire me. And then you can adjust kind of the complexity of the questions. Um, it could, it'll generate a title if you'd like, and then you hit generate. You'll get the spinning wheel for a minute or so, and then it'll present you with a couple of options. Uh, so those documents were um, primary source documents regarding treatment of laborers, specifically children uh, during the industrial revolution. And so you could read through the choices, pick the ones that you want, um, and then add them. So it won't add any of this. You have to select it, click it, and then click add to the assignment. Uh, like that. So that's how you, uh, and then you can also do this for other things as well. You could auto generate uh, the modules in your course. It could use the syllabus, for example, and generate the modules, and then you could populate the modules. Um, you can use it for discussion posts, um, journals, assignments, and tests, I believe, uh, are the, I think those are the only options uh, at the moment. So um, that is present. Another, uh, thing that they've added is the ability to uh, select output language. Um, so the, let's say we're going to auto generate an assignment here. Um, and I want to generate that assignment in Spanish. Since I didn't put anything in here, I believe it's going to just pull from um, the uh, titles <laughs> that exist within within the course, um, but it'll generate, and uh, we'll give it a second here to, to put something out. So, and so that now the text will be in whatever language you chose. And there's quite a few to choose from. I can't remember the total number, but um, 
there may be an example or a time when you need this. Uh, and if so, it is here and available. Um, I actually don't know the current state. You may need to still be added uh, to um, the, the pilot if you want to use the AI features, or they may just exist on your on your page. I'm not sure. If they don't exist, you can send us an email, cital at niu.edu, and we can get you added uh, to that feature. OK. And those are the current uh, changes that have come with AI. Any? Um, Yeah, I, I agree, Kevin. The just that ability to generate so like comprehension check questions using uh, a set of text and then being able to review them instead of um, coming up with all of them from scratch, is, I think, is, fan is fantastic and, and a uh, kind of a good time saver there. Yeah, um, a massive time saver. Like the time it takes to read through everything on your own and then generate questions, <laughs> and then yeah. You know, it's just, it's been, and then being able to generate questions at various levels of Bloom's taxonomy. And sometimes you just want the basic facts and want to understand, yep. just understand the basic facts. And then other times you want to go beyond that. And it's just been such a great tool. So highly advocate for that one. Yeah, I agree. And, and also the ability to like, you know, see what it's produced. And then you're like, oh, maybe that's not what I was going for. And you can click and select other content items that you wanted to pull from, or like you said, change the complexity right. and get a whole new set right. of questions. And it'll continue to regenerate those questions as many times as you click the button. Yeah. And then like if it does something you don't really like or whatever, it's just so much easier to adapt it and change it to what you want and to create yeah. it entirely originally on your own. Just the time saver is immense. Yep. <clears throat> Perfect. Um, so these are the features that have been implemented since uh, April or May, I'm trying to remember. April. So from April through just this just past this past week, these are the main changes. So I think the um, the big ones that are, people are going to notice, I think, are the assignment tool, some of those AI features, and the new alter documents. Some of the other ones are, um, I think, quite helpful, but maybe like less significant. You won't notice them as much if you're not looking for them, and so on. Um, but there there are getting ready to be a few changes that everyone's going to notice right away. Uh, and I'm going to preview those now just to kind of get, get it out there uh, and give you a chance to see um, what they are. So let me Here we go. So this is in our test server. We're currently testing these features, but they will be implemented, I believe, September 5th um, is the expected date. It's possible that they push that back a week. I'm not sure, though. I think it's still September 5th. Uh, so the first thing you're going to notice is that the content page is now going to look different. Uh, some people, are I think, are going to like this, and I think others may not like it as much. <laughs> it's just it's what it is. Uh, there's, it's, we don't have the ability to customize it. They were aiming for um, making it slightly easier to find some of the features. Uh, and by that, they've added the plus signs essentially between each item now. You don't have to kind of hover to find it. Um, not true within. A module, for example, you still have to kind of hover. You still see the lines, but you have to hover to get the, the plus sign. They've also moved them out to the left as opposed to um, being in the middle like they were before. And then this um, toolbar that's now over here on the right had previously been over on the left and had taken up a bit more screen. Uh, I know a lot of people were um, advocating for more um, screen space. And so I think that's part of the reason behind um, this change. A couple of other things. Uh, that I think are noteworthy is that um, all of the icons have gotten sig significantly smaller, I think. Um, and so the modules, though, on the other hand, are now uh, visually distinct from everything else. Uh, they, I think they already were if you put an image on them, but now I think it's even more dramatic. Uh, and so when you're thinking about designing your course, uh, I would highly advocate for um, structuring your course using modules and then um, distinguishing between those modules using um, using the images. Uh, and it makes it a bit easier to kind of see those pieces. So I think that's uh, probably the main change. That's, I think, fairly significant, the, the kind of layout and, and uh, kind of page design that we're going to get here. Um, all the features are still there. Uh, it, like I said, just this menu got pushed over here. They've added the plus sign so that you can see them. Um, and they, I think they, the aim was to kind of create a little bit more visual space there on the page. So 
Um, other new features that are coming, uh, the comprehension questions to alter documents, like I said. Um, so I'm gonna, once you go into an alter doc and you've already created it, you then, if you wanna edit it, you have to come up here and click uh, edit content. So I created a, um, just a two choice, multiple choice question. Um, and then once you, and that, I'll click plus here so you can see. Uh, now it will just appear here as a knowledge check um, question. And so you'll click that and then it looks like this. You only have the choice, um, at least at the moment, for multiple choice questions. I haven't heard what they intend to do with this, if they intend to expand to different question types or not. Uh, but on the rollout, this is what it's going to include. Um, and then there's a little bit of information uh, provided about the level of student responses or, or correct responses. And that's how you add those questions. And then once you save and come to the page, you'll see uh, the number of, it'll give you a little bit of a basic overview of um, student performance on those questions. So you can come into the document, you can see very quickly that students were accessing it, uh, that they completed the knowledge check and uh, they're get a gauge on the level of comprehension um, on that content. So, and I just used the editing features to move these pieces around. Uh, you still have that um, ability. You can add these, you know, down here if you want, you can expand them. Um, and this one, I took that same document. I just chopped it up into, into two, two pieces. And then I added another question down here at the bottom as well. So, um, that will be available again that first Thursday in September. Um, the same with this change. And then the last one is related to AI. And I think it's quite interesting. Uh, you may have different opinions and I'm, I'm happy to hear those if you do. So let's test it out. We're gonna click plus, we're gonna create. And then essentially what it is, is it's an AI conversation bot. So you will select this. Uh, you can put in a any content that you want the students to uh, work on. And the idea behind this is that it's going to ask them questions related to that, related to their responses to that question. So it's going to continue to push them to think deeper on the topic. Uh, and then it'll get to a point where uh, it doesn't feel like any progress is being made and it will kind of tell them that. Uh, it does not provide any answers. So if we put a question in here um, and then students are like, well, how would you answer this? It won't answer it. Um, how it chooses to give those responses is based on what you put in here. So this one says supportive. Um, I practiced this the other day and I, I think I put in, uh, what, what did I put in? Uh, <laughs> I put in angry, grumpy, and uh, uh, I, I can't remember what else I put, but but the, the essentially the bot got a little bit snarky with me on my um, responses, which I kind of had fun with. Uh, you may not want to do that with your students, uh, but then you can kind of, again, adjust that complexity. You can change the image. So when they demoed this at, um, at the Blackboard conference, they had, I think they had like Aristotle or someone in here, and then you can put in the personality traits that would be similar to what we may perceive for that person, um, and then build from there. So does anybody have a question? We can actually have 10 minutes. We can test this out here as a, as a group. Any sort of question that you would ask in a course that you want to practice this on? Anyone? Otherwise, you're going to get a boring history question to, <laughs> to, to work on here. Kevin, maybe this is a boring history question. <laughs> no, go ahead. I would ask students what associations they have with medieval art. There we go. 
and we'll save it. And you can set a point value here. Essentially though, what the idea behind this is that students kind of push their understanding and then there's a reflection piece. So they can uh, work through a series of questions to kind of demonstrate their understanding of a topic. You as the instructor then can go in and view their conversation. So this is not a private conversation that they're having with the bot. It's uh, very transparent for you. And then uh, if you want to make this a graded assignment, essentially it's their ability to kind of reflect on their learning or their understanding and so on. So let's make it visible and Okay, if it's there, and then we'll go to student preview and we'll do a run through of this. So when they, when the students access it, they'll start the attempt. And then it'll, whatever name you gave your, your character here, please share your initial thoughts. Um, I don't know, Kevin, I'll put you on the spot again. Any, any way that you would expect a response to this? Expect students to respond? Frequently they respond by saying something to the effect of, you know, I think medieval art is scary, dark, gloomy. And then essentially it's going to take the language used to, to respond and then generate questions to dig deeper into that. Like what specific elements in medieval art make you feel that it is scary and gloomy? Oh, um, uh, uh, massive cathedrals with little light in them. How do you think the mood created by little light differs in medieval cathedrals compared to modern buildings? <laughs> so essentially what it's going to do though is just continue to, to push questions like this. And then if you tried something like, uh, if I tried to get it to respond or generate answers for me, it, it won't do it. So this one was supported. If you have it <laughs> less supported, <laughs> It will be like, ah, nice try trying to get me to do the work for you and then rephrase the question back at them. Um, so we'll just submit here. And close. And then what that's going to look like for instructors is they'll be able to go into submissions. And then you'll be able to read through the log and then essentially read the reflection and kind of gauge their understanding here. Um, I think it's an interesting tool. Uh, I think there are a lot of, could be a lot of value in this, uh, depending on how you set it up. Um, I'll be really curious to see how this rolls out and how and how instructors choose to use this. So, um, yeah, I think anything it would be else? very important to be uh, very intentional and craft your questions very specifically. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. I think I think the uh, the the question construction is going to be very important for this. Um, yeah. And then and then also like making sure that you're transparent with students that it's going to be visible. You'll be able to see it and read it, um, and so on. Um, but it, it's interesting. I'll, I'll be curious next month when this rolls out to to see the feedback and and what people think. So, um, does anyone have any other questions, uh, thoughts, ideas, things you want to see that we don't see yet? Um, or just anything else in general you'd like to share? Oh, yeah, Randy, is your hand up? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I can. Sorry, I have multiple screens. Uh, <laughs> So all this AI stuff, I don't know. I know my Blackboard pretty well, but I didn't know all this. Mm -hmm. um, without looking at the sheet, is there like a AI specific Blackboard? Learn more about it coming up. Uh, the, so on Monday, there is a what's new in Blackboard. I'm sorry, what's new in AI workshop? I don't know. I'm not running that one, so I'm not positive on how much of it's going to be connected to um, to just Blackboard, it, I think it's going to be a little bit more general, but I'm sure it'll have some information on Blackboard there. Um, that might be worth checking out. 
Uh, and if not, um, I don't know if we're offering anything on that or not. It's something we certainly could. Well, it's, I got very excited by this and scared, but I got excited. Yeah. <laughs> I was just, I thought you all, uh, I got to know more about it. So thank you. Yeah. Yep. Great. And um, I, I'll, I'll take a look at that schedule also that we have coming up. And uh, if we don't have anything, I think that's a good topic to, to offer, um, especially as more people are becoming a little bit more comfortable and kind of open to the idea of, uh, of incorporating some of it. I guess a quick follow up, for, and not just for mm -hmm. you, but for anyone listening, is um, well, is it obvious to them that it's AI? Like when we create the like the questions we just did, and should we always? I don't know. My instinct is to sort of say like, okay, everyone, we're trying this out, like as opposed to like just throwing it in with you know every other lesson we have for the week and letting them figure it out. Is it something you foreground the AI ness of it when you use it, or is that just up to you as you use it? Does that make sense? Like, tell them that this yeah. is an AI experience. <laughs> yeah. So, I, in my opinion, that's how I would do it as well. I would be just very open. Like, yeah. this is what it is. We're looking at it. If you notice anything, let me know. Um, and, and kind of expand from there. I don't think the university has a full policy on that. Uh, so, I think it's kind of up to you on how you want to run that in your own courses. But uh, if it were me, I would. I it would very much be a. Uh, this is kind of what's going on and what we're doing and how we're using it and so on. I was just, you know, I have a, I have an online course and we have a discussion questions every week and I'm thinking of like, well, I'm going to still have mine, you know, reformat it with my new ideas and then maybe start throwing in like, okay, everyone, one of these is, was created by AI, you know, they don't have to figure it out, but like, we'll see how, mm -hmm. how what kind of responses they get compared to mine and how they work with the yeah. next thing. So thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yep. And you're welcome. Uh, so if you're curious, if you, well, first of all, you're not expected to be an expert in Blackboard, uh, and it's updating, like I said, quite rapidly. Um, so if you ever have any problems or any challenges or questions, it doesn't matter how small it is, please reach out to us at CIDL. Um, and you can do that through our website, or you can email us at CIDL at NIU.edu, uh, and we're happy to help. And there's always someone here uh, that, that should be able to solve your questions. Um, and again, it doesn't matter how big or how small they are, please reach out and let us know, and we will help you um you know find find some solution to to that to that issue uh again we're also having um additional workshops that are coming up i'll send those out in the email um that i send following this workshop and we have we essentially have two websites we have the typical CIDL teaching and learning website and we also have a blackboard specific website uh that are both full of resources uh, that you can use Yes, uh, we can do that anytime that you would like. If you want to hang on and you have time, we can do that now right at the end of this call, or you can uh, just send me a message and we can uh, find a time to do it too. Perfect. So we'll do that. So I'm going to shut this off.